thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender, true teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. But most of all, we thank him for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. To all of our brothers and sisters that are present and to the millions that are watching, again, we are grateful to come back in your country, in your state, in your town, in your village. We call your attention to the way of holiness that God has made known to us in the form of scripture. Jesus said they do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And when one is ignorant to the scriptures, they truly will be ignorant of God. That's why our objective, ladies and gentlemen, is always is to call your attention to exactly what the Bible says. That way you can read it for yourself, see it for yourself being properly explained and properly outlined. And many have Bibles in their hands or on the podium of their church. But if God have not opened up your understanding, I think of the eunuch uh, who was reading the scriptures in the eighth chapter of Acts, and Philip asked him, do you understand what you read? And he said, ah, how can I accept some man guide me? Everybody today need to be guided through the scriptures that we may have a proper understanding of the scriptures. In fact, Jesus says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Well, searching the scriptures is good, but if I search and still cannot understand what I'm searching, then it doesn't help me now. So God, through the apostles, step in and tell us to consider what's said. And God will give you the understanding in all things. And this is why so many brothers and sisters around the world are lost now. Because the pulpit is just as blind as the people. I, I, I would not get in the car if a man is blind. I mean, he's blind, and he has the stick with the metal tip and whatnot, and uh, he's feeling his way to get in the car. Then uh, he's not driving me nowhere. I mean, I mean, absolutely nowhere. I pray that God will give him or her their sight, but it won't be no Uber or no Lyft for you. Uh, that's the same way when it comes to having a preacher. If he's blind, can't see. And one scripture talk about your eyes, but liken it to your mind. Your eyes and liken it to your mind. You know, if you close your eyes, you're in the dark. Well, that's equal to someone being ignorant. If you open your eyes, you can make out your surroundings. That's equal to someone now being enlightened and the understanding is now open. One of the greatest things, as I said earlier today, is when your understanding come open. And I can never thank God enough for giving us a divine ability to explain scripture, harmonize the scripture, so the viewing audience can understand the scriptures. The scriptures can be a very difficult book. In the days of Daniel, when writing came on the wall, many, many to kill you far sin, the astrologers, the soothsayers, the magicians, the Chaldeans, none of them can give the interpretation of the writing, not one, until a statement was made, let Daniel be called, because the same spirit that was in Daniel was the same spirit that wrote the writing, the same spirit that's in the prophets and the apostles, the exact same spirit, hear me well the exact same spirit that was in all the holy prophets and that were in all the holy apostles must be in men today in order to properly explain the book. It doesn't matter because he got the title apostle, prophet, bishop, or elder, or pastor. If you listen to a lot of these men in the pulpit, viewers, uh, even some of them have readers, 
But if you listen to a lot of these preachers, they cannot explain the Bible. They literally cannot explain the Bible. The reader read and all the preacher do is just repeat loudly what the reader said. Or the preacher read for himself. And if you would ask him, well, what did that mean? His response going to be, it mean what it says. <laughs> and that's his way of telling you he can't explain it. Listen, uh, the Bible talk about tongues. And I want to show you this in the form of scriptural comprehension. You better give me the book of Mark, if you please. 16th chapter. I want to itemize this. I want to itemize tongues, Amen. but in a broader form. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mark chapter 16, and we'll start at verse 16. All right. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, and... He that believeth he not... He that don't believe it... Shall be damned. Shall be damned mean, well, you're going to go to hell. That's what that means. Just in case you don't know what being damned means, it means you're going to hell. All right. And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow the believer. In my name shall they cast out they devils. They shall cast out devils. They, we certainly, we believe that. Yeah. Uh -huh. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, I want to enlarge on the definition of speaking in new tongues. New tongues. Yes, that also means when one received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, they were speaking a new tongue, meaning they were speaking a language that's new to them that they never spoke before. Also, that new tongue will be an unknown tongue, tongue to them until they are blessed to interpret or someone else will interpret. That new tongue, that unknown tongue, also will be another tongue because it will be another tongue that's different from their native tongue. Now, the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters, is also the book of tongues. Tongues is speech, and it is a language. And just like you need an interpreter to properly get the message of the tongue. Let me give you an example. Give me the book of Daniel when the writing came on the wall, and also give me the book of Mark, chapter 15 and verse 39, when Jesus spoke when he was on the cross. I want to balance out both and show you the sense of it and give you the clarity of it quickly now. Amen. I believe in the days of Nebuchadnezzar or Belteshazzar when the writing came in the wall. Midi, midi, tekel. In the book of Daniel. All right, read quick. Daniel chapter 5, we'll start at verse 23. Come on. But hast thou lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven? Yes. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. Now the world have lift up themselves against the God of heaven. The whole world done it. They have lift up themselves against the God of heaven. They think more highly than they ought to think. They think more highly of money. Think more highly of materialistic folly. Think more highly of their position. Think more highly of their opinion or their theology or their philosophy or some type of educational background where they esteem it much higher than the God of heaven. Uh -huh. And they have brought the vessels of his house be before thee. Yes. Thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. Yes. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood. Wait a minute. Wood. They praise what? Thou hast praised the gods. Thou hast praised the gods. Of silver. Of silver. And gold. Gold. Of brass. Man-made. That's, right. That's you, human family. That's you. You praise gods made by the hands of men, by the hands of women. That's why there should never, ever be idols in your church of some so-called divine deity. There should never be a cross in your church with an image on it. Now, if you got a cross in your church, all right, fine, but it shouldn't be an image on it. No, no, not at all. They should, in fact, we don't even have pictures. You know, most churches have the picture of the pastor and his wife in the auditorium where they wish up. No, 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 uh-uh. You want to put that in the hallway somewhere or, or in the foyer or in the office. Never in the place where you're actually worshiping God. Amen. Anytime someone put a big picture, Pastor Jennings, in the temple where you worshiping God, the devil put it there. Eh? 
I say the devil put it there, and if anybody put it there, then let a brother get a ladder or something and take it down and burn it up. Right. You should never have a picture of the preacher in the temple in the place where you're worshiping God. Put it in the hallway or in the office or somewhere like that, but not in the sanctuary where God is being worshiped. All right. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold. Yes, you okay. praise the god of silver and gold. Of brass. Of brass. Iron. And there's another god of silver and gold that the world is praising. It's called money. Mm -hmm. Money. Amen. They, they praise the Benjamins and the Lincolns and, uh, <laughs> and the Washingtons. Oh, how the human family praise their money but look at the great magnificent power of god now how his uh, by his permission he done touch the economy of the world he done touch the economy of the world he just keeps showing man that everything fell but him listen and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and of brass iron wood and stone which see not not nor hear, Come nor, on, son. nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose all, all thy ways hast thou not done. All right. Thy. Then was part of the hand sent from him. Then was part of the hand sent from him. And this writing was written. The writing was written. And this is the writing what that is was it? written. Many, uh -huh. many to tell you far sin. Many, many to tell you far sin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Now hold it. The child deems, sooth says, the astrologers, the scripture says, could not read the writing. That's right. The scripture says they could not read the writing. Then came in all the king's wise listen, men. Listen, listen at this. Daniel chapter 5 and at verse 8. Follow me. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing. Viewers, they could not read the writing, nor... Nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. That's what I'm talking. That's right. <coughs> Many are reading the writing of the scripture, but they can't give you the interpretation thereof, meaning they don't understand the language of the scripture. Okay. If someone read the writing, reading the Bible, reciting the scriptures, all right, that, that's good. That's right. But it's better to understand what you just read. Right. In the days of Daniel, it was written many, many to kill you far sin. So Daniel was able to explain what it was. Listen at this now. This is the interpretation of the this thing. This is the meaning. This is the interpretation of the message. This is the meaning of the tongue. Meaning. Meaning. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Do you see how he break it down in sections? That's right. He break it down in sections. Meaning, that means. God hath numbered thy kingdom. You have numbered the kingdom. And finished it. And finished it. Tekel. Tekel. Thou art weighed in the you balance. You are weighed in the balance and, and found, found wanting. Perez, Perez, thy kingdom is divided. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and, and given Persians. given to the Medes and Persians. Now, mm -hmm. when Daniel read it and interpreted and broke it down, only then can the king give the proper response. Jesus was on the cross in the book of Mark, chapter 15, at, and verse 39. Uh, St. Mark, chapter 15, we're at verse 34. Uh, begin there, all right. And at the ninth hour, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud Jesus voice. Jesus cried with a loud voice. Saying, Eli, Eli, saying, Eli, Eli, lama lama sabachthani, sabachthani, which is being interpreted. What is it? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, uh, in order for, now, now let us remember, when he first spoke, when he spoke that, those that were around didn't know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Because they gave, they gave their statement. They said, well, is he, is he calling for Elias? That's right. And then what he said? That's right. Is he calling for Elias or is he calling for one of the other prophets? Mm -hmm. or, uh, or is he looking for someone to deliver him? That's right. But they had no idea That's right. what Jesus was talking about. That's right. They had absolutely no idea. That's right. And yet they heard Jesus spoke. Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. Now in the my book, God, my God, where hast thou forsaken me? All right, what you have? Now in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 27, and at verse 41. Come on, read quick. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders yes. said he saved others. 
He saved others, lest he can he save himself. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. Yes. And we will believe him. Uh -huh. He trusted in God. Yes. Let him deliver him now. Uh -huh. If he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Yes. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his yes. teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the, About the all the land. the sixth hour was darkness covered the land. Unto the ninth hour. Uh -huh. and, at the, and at about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Said what? Saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. Eli, Eli, sabachthani. That is to say, my, my God. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when now they listen heard that. listen at this. Listen at this. Listen at this, viewers. Matthew chapter 27 and at verse 47. Some of them that, that stood, stood there when they heard that. When they heard Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. Said, this man calleth for e Elias. They thought he's calling for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar. And then what? And put it on a reed and gave him to drink. Uh -huh. The rest said, The rest said, Let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save Let's him. see if Elias going to come rescue him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, Did yielded, up the, yielded up the ghost. Now, he wasn't calling for no Elias. Okay. This is what happened when you lack the spirit of God and cannot properly interpret the language or the tongue that is spoken. Okay. Now, viewers, you better give me the book of Corinthians. Yes. You got the tongues of men yes. and you got the tongues of angels. Mm -hmm. Now, viewers, the scriptures is the tongue of God. Okay. What do you mean the tongue of God, Pastor Jenner? The scriptures is the speech of God. It's the speech of God. It's what God spoke to the prophets. That's right. It's what God spoke to the apostles. But then God have to give you the sense thereof. That's right. uh, after you read that, you better go, I believe, to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. I want to get the sense of the writing. Right. Uh, all right, come on, son. Let it, what you have now? First Corinthians chapter 13, we're at verse 1. All right. Though I speak with the tongues of men. Though I speak with the tongues of men. And of angels. And of angels. And have not charity. And don't have love. I am become a sounding brass. Sound of brass and a tinkling of a cymbal. Now the tongues of men is the wisdom of the world. Oh, yes, you look at the educated language of men and the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious that is spoken from all around the world, and they think the only way or the way to properly explain the Bible is through philosophy and theology and hermeneutics and all type of other books to aid them to understand the Bible. Viewer, let's get a clear understanding. The book of scriptures is divinely inspired. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. It is divinely inspired. So therefore, I don't need for me to run to the book, another book, uh, where there is no divine inspiration, looking for that to aid me to understand God. That's right. The Bible said the things of God no man know, but the Spirit of God. And men have proven to you they don't know the things of God. That's why they have so many fictitious, weak, watered-down, worthless religions that's on the market today. I want to show you that the importance of understanding the language of God and interpreting the language of God because when the preacher read the book and give the sense of the book, interpret the book, then and only then the people can understand the book and say amen to the book. Right. You better give me the book of Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, and we'll start at verse 1. Listen, viewers, this is the 8th chapter of Nehemiah, begin at verse 1. I want to show you what I'm talking. Listen at this. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man, <coughs> into the street that was be that was before the water gate. Yes. And they spake unto Ezra the, and the scribe. And they spake unto Ezra. The scribe. The scribe. To bring the book of the law of to Moses. To bring the book, glory to God of Moses' law. Which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Uh-huh. And Ezra the priest brought the law now, before I, the congregation. Now, I want you to hear this. Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation. Before the congregation. Both of men and women. Uh -huh. And all that could hear with all understanding. All that can hear with understanding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Notice the language of the scripture. Give chapter and verse again. Now in Nehemiah chapter 8 and we're at verse 2. Viewers, this is the eighth chapter of the book of Nehemiah. And at verse 2. And the two. second verse. I want you to follow me so you can get an understanding what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Get this. And Ezra the priest. Ezra the priest. Brought the law before the congregation. Brought the law before the congregation, Bo before the church. Both of men, men and, and women, women. And all that could hear. All that can hear. With understanding. With understanding. Upon now, the, mm -hmm. hearing without understanding is not good. No. Eh? Now remember, the world is hearing some type of religious message somewhere. And because men lack divine skill, you know, one scripture says, rightly divide the word of truth. If you take a whole pie, and you got four people who want to eat that pie, when you rightly divide it, you're going to cut it in quarters. Right. Eh? Right. You're going to cut it in fourths. Hey Amen. If you got me and Huey and Williams and Brother Logan, and if Huey agree to share it and don't take all of it, glory to God, once Logan get the knife and cut it in fourths, then Logan gonna have a, a, a fourth, and Huey gonna have a fourth. It won't fill him up, but you have it. And Williams, he gonna have a fourth, and I'm gonna have one. Amen. Well, then that's rightly divided. Nobody have too much, and nobody have too little. But that's rightly, rightly divided. dividing the, word, the of truth. word of truth. What do you mean? You make the scriptures come out even. That's right. And That's right. glory to God. I say you make the scriptures come out even. That's right. And when men lack divine ability, divine skill to break down scripture, to explain scripture, they have one scripture overweighing the other scripture. That's right. So therefore, they don't rightly divide the word of truth, which leave the people confused, blind, deaf, and dumb. Notice what Nehemiah tell us now. Back in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 2. Uh -huh. And Ezra the priest brought the law. Ezra the priest brought the law. Before the congregation, both of men and women. Yes. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. All right. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate yes. from the morning until midday, uh -huh. before the men and women and those that could understand. Notice the Bible keep pointing to understanding. That's right. To those that could understand. You and see, they, hearing is not enough. Right. Hearing is not enough. Right. You got to understand. The Bible say, he that hath to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say to the church. Now, after I have an ear to hear what the Spirit say to the church, I can't react to what the Spirit said to the church until I understand what the Spirit say to the church. And if the preacher bring me the Word of God, which are the words that's being spoken to the church, he got to be able to explain what the Spirit said to the church. And for him to do that, he must be able to interpret by the Spirit of God so the church can go forward. Don't you hear the Bible said that it might be made known to the church? The manifold wisdom of God. Eh? And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate. Yes. From the morning until midday. Yes. Be before the men and women and those that could understand. Yes. And the ears of all the people were attentive. Wait a minute. The ears of all of the people. All the people were attentive. They were listening. Unto the book of the law. Wait a minute. They were listening. That's right. Viewers just like you, you're listening. Even the devils that logs on, they listen. Right. <laughs> they don't like it, but they don't miss it. They listen. Listen at what the word of God says, yeah? And the ears Eat of all the, the ears, people. The of ears of all the people were attentive. Were attentive. Unto the book unto of the law. Unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon unto a pillar here, to unto the hear what God told Joshua. This book of the law, glory to God, God should not depart out of thine mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thank God to observe to do according to all that is written. Then thou shalt make thine way prosperous, and then 
thou shalt have good success. But you got to meditate in what you hear. You got to meditate in what you understand. And you got to meditate in what you learn. Do you hear the Bible talking? And the ears of all the people. The ears of all the people. Were attentive. Were attentive. Unto the book of the law. Unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. Wait a minute. Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. Which they had made for the purpose. What? And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. Which they had made for the purpose. Yes, the pulpit is for the purpose of the truth to be told. Yeah. That's, right. That's the purpose of the full fit. Right. It's made for the purpose. And the Bible speaks plain here. And Ezra, Give chapter and verse. Nehemiah chapter 8, now we're at verse 4. Nehemiah 8 and 4 says, And Ezra the scribe, And Ezra the scribe, Stood upon a pulpit of wood, And stood which, upon the pulpit of wood, Which they had made for the purpose. The pulpit is made for the purpose of the truth be told. That's right. Amen. But look at the blind leaders of the blind. They have turned the pulpit to a stage of praise dancers. Right. Huh? Right. Amen. They have turned the pulpit into a place of corruption. Women preachers and so-called Christians, comedians, and amen, and religious joke tellers, and, and all that folly. Amen. You are misusing the pulpit of wood. wood. That's right. Huh? That's right. What is that? And Ezra the scribe. Thank God, Ezra the scribe. Stood upon a pulpit of wood. Stood upon a pulpit of wood. Which they had made for the purpose. Which they had made for, for the, the purpose. purpose. The pulpit is not made to give out numbers. <laughs> it ain't made for that. The pulpit is not made to justify second marriages. It ain't made for that. The pulpit is not made to promote racism. It ain't made for that. The pulpit is not made to promote idolatry. It ain't made for that. The pulpit is made for the word of God to be preached. That's, right. eh? That's what it's made for. And you bear in mind, if a man don't preach the word of God, usher him out. That's right. Usher him out. That's right. Thank God, us, 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 usher him out. Usher him out the pulpit. Right. Thank God if he's not going to preach the word of God, get rid of him, throw him out the pulpit. Right. Amen. Nothing. Now, remember, Ezra was reading the law, right. meaning he was reading the truth that was revealed at that time. So therefore, nothing should come from the pulpit that contradict the precepts of God. Right. Eh? Right. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, preachers, nothing. Go to re read that again, Williams. Read that again. It, it sounds too good. Nehemiah chapter 8 and at verse 4. All right. And Ezra the scribe. And Ezra, that's the same Ezra that you read in the book that's called Estrus. It's the same one. Uh -huh. And Ezra the scribe. Ezra the scribe. Stood upon a pulpit of wood. Stood upon the pulpit of wood. Which they had made. Which they had made. For the purpose. For the purpose. Purpose. For the purpose. Huh? Right. Now let's see who stood with him. And beside him, beside him, come stood, on, stood Metatiah and Shema and Wait, Ananiah quick. Yes. and Urijah yes. and Hilkiah yes. and Maasai uh -huh. on his right hand. I, I want to read that because no women preachers was there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And beside there, was, there was no women preachers was there. Thank God these were sound men. Glory to God. Standing up right. with Ezra, right. the messenger of God. Right. There was no first lady there. There was no women preachers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Eh? Amen. There was no homosexuals up there. No politicians. None of that. Right. Thank God you got to respect the purpose of the pulpit. Right. If you don't respect the purpose of the pulpit, then get out the pulpit because your purpose is not welcome here. Right. What is that? And Ezra the scribe. Glory Hallelujah. to sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Ezra the scribe. Stood upon a pulpit stood of wood. Stood upon a pulpit of wood. Which they had made for the purpose. Made for the purpose. And beside him. And beside him. Stood Metathiah. Metathiah. And Shema. Shema. And Ananiah. Ananiah. And, and Urijah. And, and Hilkiah. Yes. And Maasai. Read on. On his right hand. And on his left hand, on his left hand, Pediah, uh -huh. and Mishael, yes. and Melchiah, uh -huh. and Hashum, and Hasbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Men, 
That's right. Men That's right. standing with the messenger. That's All right. right. And Ezra opened the book. And then I want, I want you viewers to get this. Ezra opened the book. Opened the book. In the sight of all the people. In the sight of the people. For he was above all the people. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. He was the messenger of God, so he was above the people. That's he right. wasn't exalted. He wasn't high-minded. His position put him above the people. That's All right? right? And when he opened it, all the people when stood up. he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, Ezra the great God. Ezra blessed the Lord. The great God. The great, the great G-O-D-S. The great G-O-D. Ha! Amen. Glory to take God. Amen. Feel us? Any time you got a preacher and when he opened the book and he come out with more than one God usher him out the pulpit. That's right. Eh? That's right. Why? He, he's misusing the pulpit. That's right. He's misusing the pulpit. Any preacher under the sun got mm. more than one God take the pulpit and drive him out. Okay. I don't care if it's your father, your grandfather, your bishop. Do you hear the Bible talking here? And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. He blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands. With lift up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Yes. Also Jeshua, uh -huh. and Benai, and Sherebiah, Jamin, Apub, Sapathiah, Hodajiah, Maasiah, Come on, Sam. Kelita, Azariah, Jezebel, Hanan, Peliah and the Levites yes. caused the people to understand the law. What? Caused the people to understand the law. Ezra opened the book. That's right. But then you had the Levites. That's right. Who caused the people to understand the law? To understand the law. And the people stood in, in their place. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly. They read in the book of the law of God. God distinctly and gave the sense and gave the sense meaning they gave the interpretation they gave the meaning of what they read and caused them and they caused the people to understand the reading glory to God ah! hallelujah. do you see it hallelujah 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 be unto God they caused the people to understand the to reading understand what the reading the reading so they read in the book in the law of Listen, God distinctly. you got to have the preacher right. to cause you to understand the reading, the reading. to understand the book of tongues, right. to understand the, beat, the, the speech of God. Right. Feel us, these blind, devil-deceived men that let you have divorce and remarry. Ain't, no, ain't nothing wrong with it gambling and living together not married and tell you that God ain't looking at your hour what he just looking at your heart and hey man you can just do anything you want to do they're not able to give the sense, the sense. give the sense of the book now go into church yeah, like like in the Catholic Church in the Catholic Church you see them reading in Latin, it sound like they singing, a la fa la la sabata manda, ya ba da ba do what you're gonna do, feel la ba shata ba sabda, ye go super califragilistic, espialadocious. <laughs> That's the devil out of hell. Eh? Amen. Now, I, I don't care what language you speak, Hebrew, Greek, Latin, Arabic, Spanish, French, Portuguese, I don't care. If you're not able to come back to that scripture and give the sense of it, give the definition of it, give the meaning of it, those that's hearing it, it don't help them none. Right. Eh? Right. They cannot obey what they cannot understand. Right. Let me say it again, like Matthew 20 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. How many devil-deceived men have quoted that scripture and baptized millions, millions, millions and had no clue what that scripture means. They took millions in water and said, I baptize you, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Took you down and brought you up. And they ain't baptized nobody in the name mm. of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They didn't do it. Why? Because they read Matthew 28, 19, but none of them 
was able to give the sense. They wasn't able to give the meaning. Look and look, look closely how important it is. Listen at what's written in the book of Nehemiah here. Back in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. Yes. So they read in the book in the law of they God. They read in the book of the law of God. Distinctly. Distinctly. And distinctly. distinctly. And that means you got to take your time and read it. That's right. You got to sound out every word. That's right. Thank God you don't want to mispronounce no word and you want to make sure you got it right. You want to read what's there. Right. Amen. In other words, you don't want to make up no homemade scripture and add your own scripture that don't exist. Right. Amen. You know, sometimes if Williams is not with me in the location, I may have other brothers read. <laughs> and sometimes brothers read what's not there. And if I didn't know the scripture, I, I, I come on, wait, it didn't say that. It didn't say that. It didn't say that. Sometimes they want to start rush and read it fast. No, 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 no. No. Thank God the word of God is sacred. Go and you got to treat it like it is. It's sacred. Yeah. It's sacred, I said. Thank God. And because the word of God is sacred, you got to take your time. Take the time and read. Do you hear what the Bible says? So they read in the book in the law of they God. They read. Listen, you got to make sure when you call the chapter and the verse, it's the right chapter and the right verse. Huh? Amen. And make sure you're reading the right thing. I remember some years ago, many, many, many years ago, <laughs> when we was in the basement, where we were still in the basement, you know. And, <laughs> amen, I, I believe I asked for uh, the book of Ecclesiastes 7.28. And uh, Solomon talks about a woman among those have I not found. And, uh, and Williams, uh, it was in the early part of our ministry, and I think I may have been about 22 or 23. <laughs> and Williams was so anxious and so in a hurry, I said, all right, Williams, give me the book of Ecclesiastes 7.28. He said, there is no Ecclesiastes 7.28. Now, this is after he done read that scripture for God knows how many years now he stands there and tells me there is. That somehow or another, it just left the Bible. Yes. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, if there is no Ecclesiastes 7, <laughs> 728, why did he say that? My because my blind brother had his Bible open to a whole different book. He had it open to the book of Proverbs. Right. He wasn't even in Ecclesiastes. Right. And he tried to convince me of that lie <laughs> that God took it out the Bible. I told him, I said, I said, where well, you got your Bible open at? Then he looked and said, oh, oh, I got it at Proverbs, huh? Hey, Amen. you see what I'm telling you? Listen at this now. In uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. What is it? So they read in the book in the law of God. They read in the book of the law of God. Distinctly. Distinctly. Now, all of my brothers that read for ministers, take your time and read. <clears throat> Do you hear the language of the book? So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly. 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 Because you can mispronounce one word and shift the entire meaning of a scripture. Right. So you have to take your time and remember what you're handling is sacred. What you're handling is above the wisdom of men and you don't want to dilute the word, pollute the word, or handle, thank God, the word of God deceitfully. Uh -huh. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly. Yes. And gave the sense. They gave the sense. And caused them. They gave the sense and caused them. To understand the reading. You see that? That's what I'm, that's by God's permission, viewers. That's what we're laboring to do. By God's permission, give you the sense of the scripture. Not just reading, but explain it. Break it down. Take it apart, line upon line, and precept upon precept, and here a little, and there a little, so you can know who God is, and what God is, and what God is not. That's right. And That's right. thank God when we come preach to you about Jesus, we can give you the sense of it, and break it down, and take it apart when, you, to when we come tell you that Jesus Christ is God, yes. Yes, oh yes, he's God, but not his flesh. 
If his flesh was God, that would mean God have a mother. No, sir. God don't have no mother. Mary is the mother of the Son of God. And God was in that Son. For Paul said to wit, God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. Well, Pastor Jennings, how can Jesus Christ be God? Because Jesus exists before the flesh did. Jesus exists before the begotten body did. Why? Jesus is the Christ, and Christ was in the wilderness, and Christ is God. That's right. The Bible says that rock that followed them was Christ. And the rock that followed them was nobody's son, but it was Christ. And the Christ is a spirit that was in the prophets. Do you see what I'm telling you? I, 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 got, I, got to give you? I got to give you the sense of it. The sense of it. The meaning of it. When I quote Matthew 20, 19, baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, a blind person to say, you see there? Right there, he read the Trinity. The word Trinity not even there. No. Eh? No. Amen. But I got the back up and give you the sense and break it down. Let you know Father mean creator. Father mean originator. So God bears the title Father because he's the author of all things that begin. Bears the title Son because after he made that body of flesh and blood, the body took on the title Son, showing you that the nature of the flesh is lesser than the nature of the spirit. And God worked through the flesh to show the world how to serve the spirit. Now he come along with the title Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost mean Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit mean Comforter. Comforter is the spirit of God that get in man to give man comfort in the time of trouble. Do you see what I'm telling you? I have to give the sense, the sense of it. You keep, you, what the William, what they say, William? So they read in the book in they the law read of God. In the book, hallelujah. Of the law of God. Of the law of God. Distinctly. Distinctly. And gave the sense. Gave the sense. And caused them to understand the the reading. The re Wait a minute. Cause them to understand what? And cause them to understand the reading. Understand what? Understand the reading. Yeah. I got to cause you to understand what Williams is doing. That's right. Huh? That's right. Cause I got to cause you viewers to understand what Williams is doing. That's right. What is it? And cause them to understand the reading. He's reading. And I got to cause you to understand it. Pause. Like somebody wrote me, you better give me the book of Zechariah quickly about the two olive trees and also the book of Revelation. Somebody wrote me and said, Pastor Jenny, would you please explain the uh, two olive trees? I want to know what is that? All right, let me, let me get into that real quick. Quickly, son, I want to break it down in the book of Zechariah. Book of Zechariah. give you the book of Revelation. And the Bible don't give their name, but you, it, it is written how you would know them by their fruit. Right. And I want to show you who the two olive trees are. And I want to break it down and take it apart section by section and piece by piece until we reduce it down to the lowest common denominator. Right. All right. In the book of Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. And at verse 11. Come on, son. Then answered I. Then answer I. And said unto him. Yes. What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Now. <clears throat> when you got an olive plant, from the olive plant, you get what is called olive oil. That's right. Olive oil is used to anoint. That's right. So therefore, uh, the two olive trees, olive trees represent two men, two servants that was anointed by God. Right. Uh -huh. Then answered I and said unto him. Then answered I and said to him. What are these two olive trees? What are the two olive trees? Upon the right side upon of the, the candlestick. Upon the right side of the candlestick. And upon the left side thereof. And on the left side. And I answered again and said unto him. Uh, come on. What, what be these two olive branches? What be these two olive branches? Which through the two golden pipes. Wait a minute. Which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves. Wait a minute. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The pipes of a man is the voice of a man. Right. And notice the oil was empty out of the pipes, right. which shows you the anointing of God come out of the mouth of his servants. That's right. huh? What be the this? anointing of God come out of the mouth of his servant until Jesus said it's not you that speaketh but the voice of my father speaketh in you that's hallelujah Lord, take God that's why I take God to get in a man amen and anoint that man mouth and thank God when God anoint his mouth hallelujah Lord, take God 
That's what makes the people understand the things of God, and it makes people come to the words of God. Uh -huh. What be these two olive branches? What be these two olive branches? Which through the two golden pipes? Which through the two golden pipes? Empty the golden oil empty out of themselves. Empty the golden oil out of itself. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not? Do what you know what this be? is? And I said, No, my lord. I don't know, Lord. Then said he. Then said he. These are the two anointed ones. I told you. Hallelujah. Take God. What are they? These are the two anointed ones. We're going to tell you who they are soon. These are the two anointed ones. That stand by the Lord of the whole earth. That stand by, by the, Lord the Lord of the whole of earth. Of the whole earth. The whole earth. Mm. That stand by the Lord of the whole of the earth. Whole now give me the book of Revelation. Now the book of Revelation chapter 11. Now we're going to tell you who they are. That's right. Uh -huh. Come Re on. Revelation chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. All right, Bill, I hope this answers your question. We're going to tell you who these olive trees are. All right? Revelation will start at verse 1. Yes. Revelation chapter 11 and at verse 1. All right. And there was given me a reed there like unto a rod. There was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angels stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. Yes. And them that worship therein. Uh -huh. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. Yes. For it is given unto the Gentiles. Yes. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two 40 months. Forty and two months, And yes. I will give power. I will give power. Unto my two witnesses. Unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred. And three score days. Yes. Clothed in sackcloth. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the Clothed two olive trees. In sackcloth. Amen. What are the two witnesses called? These are the two olive trees. Glory to God. Yes. These are the two olive trees. And or, the two candlesticks. Or, or these are the two anointed. That's right. Uh -huh. These are the two olive trees. Yes. And the two candlesticks. And the two candlesticks. Standing before the God of the earth. Wait a minute. They were seen as olive trees, olive trees. and they were seen as candlesticks. That's right. What you mean? Why were they seen as olive trees? Because they are the anointing of God. Why were they seen as candlesticks? Because they had the power of God. Right. For the power of a candlestick Hallelujah. is the flame of the candlestick. And when you got a flame, the flame is to guide you through darkness. Thank God. And the prophets had the spirit of God in them to guide you from darkness to light. Don't you hear the Bible say that the testimony of Jesus Hallelujah. is the spirit? Spirit of prophecy. And Jesus said, Hallelujah. you fools and slow of heart, believe all that the prophets have said. Hallelujah. What do you say? These are the two olive trees. These are the two olive trees. And the two candlesticks standing before and the God of the earth. And these are the, the two earth. candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, if any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Power will come out of their mouth. That's the fire. Mm. The power of God, the authority of God will be spoken out of their mouth. And devour with their enemies. Yes. And if any man will hurt them, if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. What is it? These have power to shut heaven. All right. Glory mm. take God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. I want you to focus on the language of the Bible. Mm. The Bible don't give their name, mm. but it gives you their past deeds, which calls me to know who they are. Huh? Right. Right. Bless God. Amen. The Bible don't give me their name, but it's going to give me their past deeds, right. which will which, which give me understanding of who they are. Right. Listen closely Re at the language of the Bible. Revelation chapter 11, now we're at verse <clears throat> 6. All right, son. These have power to shut heaven. These have power to shut heaven. That it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Wait a minute. Notice, it says that it rained not in the days of their prophecy. That means when they were alive. That's the prophet Elijah. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Because he shut heaven up for about three years and six months. Right. It didn't rain in the days of their, of prophecy. their prophecy. So that's Elijah. Uh -huh. And have power over waters. And powers over waters. To turn them to blood. To turn them into blood. And to smite the earth with all plagues. That's Moses. <laughs> as often as they will. Yeah. Glory right. to God. Hallelujah. That's Moses. Hallelujah. And that's Elijah Hallelujah. in the days of their, of their prophecy. prophecy. And notice how God point them out. In the days of their prophecy, of their prophecy, it didn't rain for three years and a half. Thank Hallelujah. God it shut heaven up. Hallelujah. And when Moses was here, water Hallelujah. turned the blood. They called their name, Hallelujah. but you got to know what they done Hallelujah. in the days of their prophecy that's so right. you would know them by their fruit. That's right. Yeah? That's right. I have I, I, I'm making the sense of it. That's right. Amen. Why he reads, and I'm giving the sense of it. That's right. Break it Hallelujah. down. Glory to God Hallelujah. and take it apart. Hallelujah. Give me the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. John said, I saw another Hallelujah. mighty angel. Glory to God. One foot on the earth. Thank God. And another foot 
upon the Revelation sea, chapter and 10. in his hand was a little book. That's right. Thank God, and, and the angel spoke to John right. and said, take the book. Take the book. Take the book. That's right. Thank God, but John said, give it to me. That's right. But the angel held his ground That's right. and said, take it. That's right. And John said, when I took it, right. it was in my mouth. Sweet. And what he said? And I went unto the angel. You better give chapter and verse now. Now in the book of Revelation, chapter 10, and we'll start at verse 8. Come on, Sam. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again. And said what? And said, go and take the little book. Go Hallelujah. and take the the, the little, book, little book which is open in the hand of the angel notice the language of the bible hallelujah go and, and take, take the, little, the book, little book which is open in the hand of the angel open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth and, and i went unto the angel i went to the angel and said unto him give me the little book that's contrary that's right. That's contrary. That's right. He was an apostle, mm -hmm. but he spoke opposite from what the Lord gave the angel. That's right. John said, give it to me. That and wasn't I went unto the angel. No, that wasn't God's will for you to uh, you talk, give it to him. going to give you nothing. you got to be willing to go after it. That's right. And That's right. the Bible said, if he be willing and obedient, the angel got the book there. Fill us. Glory to God. The word is right here. God wants you to take it. Take it. But you mean, if I take it, I surrender. If I take it, I submit. Right. If I take it, I give up. Right. Thank God my will. So the angel had a little book. Little book. Not that the word of God is little. Right. Uh, we, we, we'll break that part down. Amen. What do you mean little? The Bible says, talking about the son of God, uh, he was made a little lower than the angel. Right. Why does it appear as a book? Because the word Hallelujah. was made flesh and the wealth among us. Right. Amen. So we call this book the word. Right. And here is the word that was made flesh. That flesh was little in nature compared to the greatness of the spirit of God. Right. That's why the spirit is called highest and the flesh is called lower the bible said he was made a little lower than the angels but obtained a more excellent name than they but when gabriel came to mary and said he shall be called the son of the highest showing you the nature of the spirit is higher than the nature of the flesh and the nature of the flesh is lower than the nature oh, yeah. of God. That's why the flesh can sleep, but God don't sleep. Yeah? The flesh can sleep, but God, God don't sleep, no. But the flesh sleep, the flesh fast. God don't fast, why? God don't need nothing. When you fast, when you fast you're praying to a power greater than you. Jesus said, my father is greater than I, meaning the spirit is greater than the flesh. I am is greater than my body. The Holy Ghost is greater than the church. I got to make the sense of it. I got to make it plain. What is that? And the voice which I heard I from heaven spake God. unto me again. The voice! Which I heard from heaven. Which I heard from heaven. Spake unto me again. Go and take God speak to me again. And said, Go and take the little book. That's what I'm telling you, viewers. Viewers, come on and take it. Take it. Come on and take it. I try. Huh? I, try. I know you don't want it hard, head. But come on and take it. I try. Hey, Go and take the little come book. On! Which is open in the hand of the angel. Go and take God, which is open. It's open. That's right. It's open. Open. In the hand. What do the angel represent? The angel represent the preacher. That's right. Because angel means messenger. That's right. Huh? That's right. All right. Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand which of the angel. Which is open in the hand. Hallelujah. Of the angel. God of the angel. Which standeth upon the sea which and upon the earth. Which standeth upon the sea and the earth. And I went unto the angel. And I went to the angel. And said unto him. What? Give me the little book. No, no. God didn't say that. God didn't tell you to do Go that. Go and take the little book. Huh? Mm -hmm. The angel said, take it. Mm -hmm. John said, well, I got something else in mind. How about you give it to me? Give me the little book. <laughs> huh? Give it to me. That's right. uh -huh. And he said unto me, take it. That's the way you are, viewers. Mm -hmm. That's the way you are right after the Lord tell you to do something. You come along and tell your preacher, well, look, this is 
my opinion. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And your old false prophet say, well, if that's the way the Lord leads you, that's all right. <laughs> that's and he right. go on and give over to any type of trash you want to bring. That's right. Listen at this closely. And I went unto the angel. I went to the angel. And said unto him, give me the little and book. Said, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it. Take it. And eat it up. And eat it up. And it shall make thy belly It'll bitter. Make your belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth It'll sweet be in your as mouth honey. Sweet as honey. That's the way the word of God is. Right. When it gets to your belly, it's bitter. Right. But when it's in your mouth, it's sweet as honey. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Sometimes the moment you hear the word of God, it gives you joy. It gives you joy. And then uh, when you digest it and start thinking and meditate right. over it, of the things you got to go through on behalf of that same word. Bitter. Bitter, bitter means, bitter. well, your happiness may change. That's right. Because now you realize the suffering that is involved and you may be crying and whatnot and kind of upset and kind of sad because you don't want to give him up, but you got to give him up. You don't want to give her up, but you got to give her up. You don't want to stop going to that club and partying, and, but you know you got to give it up. So to justify yourself, you go to a church that say, well, it ain't no, it ain't no harm to indulge a little as long as you don't <laughs> overindulge. And when you go to a church that say that right away, you say, I found it. I I found it right away. You get happy because you got a sinner for a preacher who's going to tell you what you want to hear. That's why it takes God to make a preacher. And when God make a preacher, he come back to you God's word telling you what you got to do even if you don't want to do it. What he said? And I took the little book out of the angel's hand. Oh, John, John, John submit now. John submits. Now John give up. He got rid of what he said, give it to me. Now he submit, he give up, he give over. And John said, I did what? And I took the little book took out it. of the angel's hand. The angel told me to take it, so I was obedient. That's right. I took it. And I took the little book. I took the little book. Out of the angel's hand. Out the hand of the angel. And ate it up. And I, wait a minute. Mm. Wait a minute. <laughs> I took it. I took the little book out of the, the angel's hand. The little book out the hand of the angel. And ate it up. I threw it away. I, and ate it up. I threw it away. And ate it up. No, I had my opinion. And ate it up. I, I, I got some other history books that helped me understand it. And ate it up. What did he do? And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. You that are watching me all around the world, this book right here. Hallelujah. What they got to do, William? Ate it up. What they got to do? Ate it up. You might as well get ready to open your mouth, open your mind, and open your heart and digest the truth of God and live by it or to hell you're going. That's right. Ah! That's right. What is that? And I took the little book. I took it. Out of the Glory, angel's hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I took the little book. Out of the angel's hand. Viewers, you got to come along and take it from the hand of the preacher. <laughs> you got to take it. Go ahead. Amen. But well, the little book and the hand of the angel represent the preacher. He got the word here. He got the bread of life. You got to take it. <laughs> Meaning when he give it to you, you got to take it. Hallelujah. You got to submit to it. You can't add your idea. You can't add your opinion. You got to take exactly the way it is written and say, not my will, but let thine will be done. Right. All you women preachers, you got to take it. And when you take it, you'll run out the pulpit. And then all you that got second wives and second husbands, you got to take the book and you got to get rid of your second husband, your second wife. I don't care if your preacher come telling you that the Lord spoke to him and for him to tell you, you all right, that devil spoke to him. Right. I want every viewer to hear this. If you got a preacher that told you while you were in your second marriage and your first wife and your first husband still living and your pastor, your apostle, your bishop, your elder, your evangelist, your teacher, your deacon told you you all right, God gave you that new man, God gave you that new wife and your first wife and first husband still living, you got a sinner that told you that. That's a right. false prophet told you that. That's right. A lie I told Hallelujah. you that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. What they got to do, son? And I took the little book out I of the angel's hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Come on, human family. You got to take it. Take it. You got to take it. It's right here. That's right. Amen. You got to take it. Get mad, cuss, yell, scream. Hallelujah. But you got to take it. That's right. Huh? And I took Don't the little book. You that's watching now. 
living together, not married. You got to take it. She got to get ready to go, or he got to get ready to go. Take it! You owe no good bum for a father. We don't want to take care of your children. You got to take the book. The book said if you don't do it, you're worse than an infidel. You got to take the book. What is that? And I took the little book. I took it! Out of the angel's hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank you. Hallelujah. And what he said? And I took the little book. I took the little book. Out of the angel's hand. Out of the angel's hand. And ate it up. I did what? And ate it up. No, I just, just chewed on and spit it out. And ate it up. Push it aside. And ate it up. Asked for some, some dessert. And ate it up. I asked some, I asked some sugar to it. And ate it up. You gotta take it just like it is. That's right. And it's just, right. just like it is. That's, right. That's why this message is so raw and so forcible and so strong. Yeah. You gotta eat it up. Thank God we're not gonna water nothing down for nobody. That's right. Amen. Say I've had people tell me, well, Pastor Dennis, take it easy. <laughs> I I have had old bishops tell me. I remember years ago, years ago. I preached at a church, I think I was about 23 or 24 or 25. I preached at a church in Trenton, New Jersey called the Antioch, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. It was associated with Bishop Bonner and the preacher. He's passed away now. His name was Dr. Clark. And I preached there and it had a good crowd. As long as I preached baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, there's one God. He was amen. Praise the Lord. So when we begin to preach against, bless God, having your head uncovered and every woman in there was bareheaded. Lips all painted, children, mini skirts, half naked. And when I begin to blast that back to hell, thank God the deacon, the deacon got up and said, Pastor Jennings gave Bible for everything, and we gonna eat up all what he said. The bishop jumped up right in his own church and said, You better not eat up what that man said. And the deacon said, But he gave Bible. The bishop, the bishop said, I don't even care if he gave Bible. We don't believe it here, and we don't preach it here. And then Bishop, his name was Dr. Clark. He looked at me and said, young man, I used to be like you when I got started. I was on fire and strict. He said, but when I got older, I realized the importance of going to seminary school. I took a few courses of theology and what he said, that's what you need to do, young man. He said, young man, go to seminary school, go to some Bible college, learn some theology and some hermeneutics and some philosophy. And he said, you will have a different perspective about things and you'll find yourself a being. But he said, ain't nobody preaching that old stuff you're preaching. At the time, I was no more than about 23 or 24. He said, it ain't no one preaching that old stuff that you're preaching. He said, if you keep preaching that, you, it ain't nobody going to follow you. But my Lord, all these thousands of people, man, it goes to show you that how many senior citizen preachers, how many old bishops in their 60s and 70s and 80s, some of them used to be firm, but thank God they done took the Bible and threw it in the trash. Now I'm telling every preacher, Hallelujah. every church, every person in the world what the angel told John. And I took the little take book. Take it! And eat it up. John, take it! And eat it up. Lord, thank God the angel told John to take it and eat it up. And, it's and I'm telling every church member, every senator, Hallelujah. every politician, thank God. God, regardless of your prediction, of your, of your position, you got to take it and eat it up. Yeah. Thank God. And John ate it. And John said he did what? And it was in my mouth. It was in my mouth. Sweet as honey. Sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten And as it, soon as I eat it. My belly was bitter. But how did he eat it? Eat it up. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. I ate it up. Ate it up. Viewers. You don't need for you to spit the truth of God out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't need for you to spit it out. Right. Hey man, we done jam your chops with one God, and you trying to spit it out. Chops to Trinity, Trinity. No, 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 no. You might as well scrape that stuff up. That's right. And come on back and eat one Amen. God. Okay. You might as well eat water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. You might as well eat Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. You might as well eat one church. You're all baptized by one spirit into one body. Thank God because God be my helper. As long as he have my big mouth on the earth, Hallelujah. we're going to serve it, serve it, serve it, serve it, serve it. The one book. The one gospel. Hallelujah. Over to God.
as long as God have my big mouth, thank God in the earth, that one book, we're going to give it to creation. And he said unto me, listen at this, still in Revelation 11 and verse 9. He said unto me, Revelation chapter 10 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 9. And he said unto me, take it. Take it. And eat it up. Viewers, are you going to take it? Or are you going to be hard headed and arrogant and puffed up and tell me, well, my bishop said we ain't got the... Who cares about your bishop? <laughs> well, my, my apostle does... Who cares about your apostle? That's right. That's right. Who cares? That's right. Do you hear the word of God? And he said unto me, take it. Take it! And eat it up. What do America got to do? Eat it up. What do America got to do? Take, take it, it and eat it up. And eat it up. America got to take it and eat it up. That's right. England got to take it and eat it up. Canada got to take it and eat it up. Jamaica, amen, got to take it and eat it up. The Bahamas and the Virgin Islands and Switzerland and Australia. Oh, take yeah. it. Take oh, it. Thank God they got to take it. And eat it up. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it take God and eat it up. You got to do it. Hallelujah. You got to do it. That's right. Hate me all you want. Who cares? Okay. It, does, it doesn't matter what you think. You got to come back and take it. Take it and eat Lord, it up. Take God and eat it up. That's right. What did he say? And he said unto me, take it. He said unto me, take it. Take it. And eat it up. Well, I don't think the boss is wrong. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you think. You got to take it and eat it up. And eat it up. That's right. You're going to eat it. You might as well get your chops ready. That's right. Get your mind ready. Right. Get your heart ready. Preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. You're going to get... You're going to get the women preachers out your pulpit or you're going to be dropped in hell. That's right. Yes, you are. Yeah. I don't believe it, Pastor Jennings, but it doesn't matter at all. Right. It doesn't matter. Thank God you're going to come back to the one book and do the one thing and follow the one precept. I believe the Bible said we all must walk by the same rule and mind the same thing. Pastor Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, Now beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Right. That there be no divisions among you, but, and that you be perfectly joined together mm. in the same mind and same judgment. Yes, yes, if there's yes. any preacher, I don't care how old you are. Go ahead. Or how young. Yes. So it take God while the death angel is almost knocking at your door, yes. you're gonna come back right. and bow to what the Bible said, or go to hell in your old age. Right. Hey! And he said unto me. He said unto me. Take it. Take it. And eat it up. That, that's what I'm telling folks. Come that's on right. back to Bible. Right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to take Bible. It. That's right. Glory Hallelujah. Take God, you're going to take it. Take it and eat Hallelujah. it up. Glory to God, I'm going to take it. And eat it up. Yeah. Eat it up. I, I, you know, you know, you know, I, I'm determined to preach this thing if I die doing it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. amen. I, I'm just determined to. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I, it just runs all through my sanctified soul. Amen. When I look at these men out here for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and now they take the Bible and push it aside, they have gotten too weak to lift a standard for God. They have gotten too weak to lift a firm standard for God. They are scared of losing members. I'm scared of losing my soul. And he said unto me, said unto me, take it and and eat it up. Do what? Take it and eat it up. Okay. You that's in the pulpit, you're going to take it. That's right. You're gonna, you, that goes for all the preachers in First Church, all the members. Right. You're going to take it or go to hell. That's right. Huh? That's right. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're my mother, my sister, my brother, my children, my wife, mm. my cousins, my uncles. Oh, I, got, I got cousins. I got cousins that claim they're women preachers. I got in-laws that claim they're women preachers. But you're not going to step a half in the kingdom of God until that woman preacher sit down. Every woman that says God called and sent me to preach the gospel, you lie on God. Huh? That's right. You's a liar. I say you's a liar. That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. You're going to take the word of God. All of my 
cousins and all of my in-laws who claim you's a woman preacher, you's a liar, you a liar, your pastor is a liar, your mama is a liar, everyone that supported is a liar because the Bible speaks plain. Give me First Timothy, son. My God, First Timothy. First Amen. Timothy chapter chapter two. 2 and verse 12. At verse I suffer. Not a woman to teach. Amen. This is, this is another scripture that you got to eat up. That's right. This is another scripture that you got to eat up. That's right. This is another scripture you got to eat up. Right. The word of God says. But I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to Nor suffer authority, authority over, the, over man, the man. But to be in but silence. But to be in silence. And you old lying women. Talking about using evangelist. Use an elder. You a pastor. I say before. Say I now again. I got cousins right here in Philadelphia. Thank God that claim they women preachers. I got in-laws. Thank God who claim you women preacher. Every in-law, every cousin, every man and every woman. I don't care if you don't like Gino. It doesn't matter what you don't like. That's right. You're going to come on back That's and right. do what the word of God say That's do. Right. What is that? But I suffer not a woman to I teach. I suffer. Not a woman to teach. Oh, Hallelujah. let take God. Oh, let take God. Hey, Nor to your supper thoughts. I suffer. I suffer not a woman to Every teach. Every woman that step in the pulpit, you's a liar. That's right. If your husband support it, he support a lie. That's if right. your mother support it, she support a lie. That's and right. I want to say to y'all, you weak, old, false prophets mm. that's ready for hell. Mm. You got women preachers in your church. You are sent by the devil. Mm. You work for the devil. Use a shepherd of the devil, right. and you and your congregation will be dropped in hell. That's right. Are you listening? But I suffer not a woman to teach. You know I ain't tied to no family. Mm -hmm. I ain't tied to nobody That's right. but that book. That's so it. I want to say to my cousins and my in-laws, call me. <laughs> hey, right. Call me. That's right. Call me, I say. Right. And I tell you to your face, all of you that claim you're women preachers, that's related to Pastor Jenny. Go ahead. Man. By blood mm. or by marriage. Mm. You are liars. Right. And the church you go to are false churches. And only a weak, spineless, good for nothing, poor excuse of a man will follow you. That's right. Hey! That's right. What are we going to do with the book? But I. What are we going to do with the give book? Give me the little book and he said unto me, take What are we going to do with the book? Take it and eat it up. Take it and eat it up. You might as well eat it. That's right. I'm not out to be friends with nobody. That's right. I'm out to stare you away from hell. That's right. Take it! Take it and eat it up. Eat it up! And it shall make thy belly bitter. I want to say to all my in-laws, all of you got to repent. Every last one of you. Yeah. You got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Turn it for the Holy Ghost. Come out your false churches. Yeah. Come out your second marriages. Come out your third marriages. My cousins that got your second wives and second husbands, you might as well come out your second marriages and your second husbands. My families that members that go to the churches, where women preach, thank God, you might as well come out. Right. You might as well come out. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're going to hell Go for not coming out. Right. And I challenge here, 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 here. I want to say to my cousins and in-laws, Gino, challenge your pastor that got you liars in the pulpit claiming you're a woman preacher. I make your pastor lick that lie up even if he's your husband. Hallelujah. What did he say? And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. You're going to take it. Oh, yes. Who? You. You're going to take it. Oh, yes. The word of God say, take it. Take it and eat it up. All this play in church going on. All this play in church. Hallelujah. People going to hell by the thousands. That's right. And you scared, weak, cheap, spineless things that call yourselves preachers. Hallelujah. He don't preach with love. Hallelujah. William. William got the love book right now. Book. That's he right. got the love book. That's right. Yeah? That's right. He got the love book. That's right. What did the love book say? And he said unto me, take it. Give chapter and verse Revelation, from the love book. Revelation chapter 10 and at verse 9. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 9. And I went unto the angel. You jump on Geno Genesis now. You jump on Pastor Genesis. As you can see, viewers, I don't bit more care about family and nobody else. When it comes to that Bible, there's one law. That's right. One law. That's right. The Bible says, one Lord, That's right. one faith, one, one baptism.
baptism. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Just one. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just one. And you dumb, ignorant relatives, uh, go listen at your sister and your cousin to my son. She got a trial sermon. She's on her way to hell. Amen. You go listen to your daughter and your niece and your granddaughter talking about a trial sermon. Come tell Gino that. That's right. I thank God I take that courthouse Hallelujah. and make you dismiss that trial once I smash it with the Bible. That's right. Hey! That's right. What did he say? And I went unto the angel. I went unto the angel. And said unto him, give me the little book. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Give, give me, me the, the little, little book. book. And give he said it. unto me. Hallelujah. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give me the little book. Give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it. The angel said, oh, no, huh? You gonna stick, you gonna obey what I tell you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you gonna obey what I tell you. That's right. You gonna take it. And he said unto me, take it. Take it, John. And eat it up. John, not only, not only are you gonna take it, you're gonna do something with it. And eat you it ain't up. gonna take it and look at it and lay it aside and say, well, Pay it later, no, John. That's right. <laughs> oh no. no. Well, I, I I take it and just lay it on the side. I, I'm gonna talk to somebody about it. <laughs> That's right. I wanna talk to my girlfriend about it, see what she think. I talk to my boyfriend about it, see what he think. I'm gonna talk to my mommy, <laughs> see what she think. Talk to dad. Hey dad, what do you think about the little book? Uh, he ain't gonna do none of that. That's what did he tell John to do? And he said unto me, take it, take it, and eat it up. Amen. Take it and eat it is up. That, is that clear? Oh, yes. He ain't say take it and fumble with it. Take it and eat it up. That's why the preacher, viewers, 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 you hard haired, stiff necked, stubborn things, you got to have a preacher that's unafraid to tell you the simplicity of the scriptures. Bring it plain. Break it down and make it plain. And, and even the viewers know what is made plain because they get mad, they get upset, they be like, <sighs> then they make their comment. He he's an antichrist. <laughs> he's a cult leader. He he don't preach with love. Right. And my spirit don't agree with that. It doesn't matter what your spirit don't agree <laughs> with. Go ahead, take God. Yeah. Go ahead. It doesn't matter what your spirit don't agree with. That's right. You're gonna come back to Bible. That's right. You coming back to Bible. Your your mama, your daddy, oh. your grandpappy. You gonna come back to Bible, or your hips gonna be in hell. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. Amen. So you ain't got to like what I'm preaching. It doesn't matter. I'm sent to tell you what the Bible said, and don't right. give two cents. Who don't like it? That's right. Huh? That's right. What did he say? And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. That's what I'm telling you. That's right. Take it. Take it. Eat it up. Eat it up. Why? And it shall make thy belly bitter. And it make your belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Many of you bitter right now. You're bitter right now. Bitter. Oh bitter. yeah, you some of you bitter right now. Amen. Yeah. I, I got cousins now. Bitter. 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 Hey man, I got cousins bitter now. That's watching. That's watching their cousin. They're watching their cousin Gino right now, that's right. blasting you to hell. That's right. Hey man, you and your weak husband that don't say nothing, mm. blasting you to hell, mm. and you going around to these churches just getting money, just stealing money, claiming you some preacher. Every woman that says God called us to preach the gospel, you have lied that's right. on God. That's right. Every woman. That's right. And jump on Gino Jennings, yeah? Hallelujah. That goes for relatives and in-laws. Hallelujah. When it comes to that Bible, who is my mother? Right. Sister and brother, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Right. I was made a minister right. of the New Testament. Right. Oh, thank God, God have made me an enforcer right. of his word. Right. And I'm determined to enforce God's word upon the head of creation. Right. What he said? And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. America, 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 America. Take it. Take it and eat it up. You women preachers in these churches and your dumb preachers say, God will use a woman just like he used a man. That's your lying mouth. That's right. Where's that scripture at? Where's that scripture? Yes. Where's that scripture? Well, he used a donkey. I didn't know your wife was a donkey. That's right. I didn't know your mama was a donkey. That's right. I didn't know your sister and grandma was a donkey. That's right. Why are you going to compare the woman to a donkey? That's right. Why would you do that, you do infidel? That? That's right. You're Hallelujah. so blind and so deceived. 
Thank God and you men, you are an embarrassment to your manhood. That's right. God said he made man in his image. Yeah. And here these old weak spineless men are an embarrassment to God's creation. Right. Scared to stand up. Yeah. Scared to stand up and take your wife out the pulpit yeah. because you're afraid that she won't have sex with you no more. Mm. Go ahead, you're go ahead. afraid that she won't have sex with you no more. Go ahead, go ahead. So here you is, a religious Uncle Tom, in your house. Hallelujah. God said, let us make man. And brother, he made me that. Hallelujah. God made me that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and he said unto me, take it and eat it up. Give chapter and verse again. Still in Revelation chapter 10 and at verse 9. What is it? And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. You're going to eat it or go to hell. That's right. Who? That's right. You. You're going to eat it or go eat to hell. Right. If you just go to listen to a woman preaching, yeah. you have having pleasure in what she's doing. Right. And if you don't quit, you're going to drop in hell. That's right. I don't care if it's your sister. And yeah, 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 yeah. You preachers, you preachers who's lying, talking about the Lord gave you this woman and your first wife is still living and you blind, dumb women is willing to believe some old pimp, amen, whose wife is still living and he gonna marry you. He's no preacher. No. He's a pimp. That's right. That's right. Get that? That's right. He's no preacher. He's a pimp. I know you don't like it, but there's nothing you can do about it. This, this is what you're going to do about it. This is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to take it. And he said unto me, take it. You're going to take it. And eat it up. Bishop Pimp, Pimp, Bishop Pimp, Pastor Pimp, yeah. Evangelist Pimp, Elder Pimp. That's right. What, what is he going to do? Take it. And what else? And eat it up. What is, the, what is he going to do? Take it and eat it up. All right, let's close out in Acts 38 now. I'm ready, to, I'm, ready, I'm, I'm ready to come home now. That's right. I'm ready to come home. Glory to God. What did the Holy Ghost say? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Ah, if you women don't come out the pool and repent of your sins and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to be locked in hell. That's you right. women, you women that are, are the victims of these preachers who got a living wife and the preacher lied and said that you are his wife. And he suckered you into marriage and suckered you into the bed mm. and suckered you into pregnancy and he got a living wife? Mm. Okay. You're nothing like a hoe and he's the pimp. That's right. You don't like that and what do I care? Amen. Tell him to go back to his wife. Well, he said the Lord told me. He lied. Mm. That's right. He's Amen. willing to say anything to get down in your underwear. Mm. Huh? Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. say anything. Go ahead. That's why you devils don't like me. Thank God, because God made me a lion, and I growl the truth at you. Right. And man, you'd rather have your, you, 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 you'd rather have your preacher, because your preacher come along and just, Before God, Mr. Preacher, Mr. Preacher, you took some innocent girl and lied to her while your first wife was living, and you told her, the Lord told me you my wife. I want to say to all women who fell victim to that religious scam where any preacher told you you're his wife and his first wife is living, and he told you that and went on and married you and said the Lord told him. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. That's right. He's a liar. That's right. Seventh chapter of the book of Romans, quickly, son. Romans 7 and at verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Now that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. 
For the woman which hath an husband, woman to have a husband is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he lives. Then what? But if the woman, but if the husband be dead, if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Then what? So then if, if while her husband liveth, while her husband is alive, she be married to another man, married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. All right, preacher, preacher, here your wife is still living, and here you done told some girl, you're my wife, the Lord gave you to me. And he go up with some tongue. I'm making a fool out of you. So then if any time his wife is living, and he's married to another woman. Right. He's an adulterer. That's right. That's right. I don't care if he claim he's a pastor or a bishop or the son of a bishop. That's right. All women that's, right. that's married to a preacher, that's right. and your preacher have a living wife. That's right. You are not his wife. That's right. So you are living in fornication, and the preacher is living. In adultery. That's right. That's right. Liar. Liar. Jump on Pastor Jennings. Hallelujah. Liar. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to take you for a 1932 ride. That's right. Liar. That's right. Acts 2 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Then Peter said unto them, said unto them Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remission of sin. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, I thank God for giving us the ability to bring you the sense of the book. Sense of it. Make it plain. That's right. Eh? That's right. Write the vision. Mm -hmm. Make it plain. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said, write That's the right. vision. So they read in the book. Make it plain that he that readeth may run. Now, viewer, you can run for your life. I want to say it again. All women who's married to some preacher, and that preacher have a living wife, and that preacher said the Lord spoke to him about you, and you go on to marry that pimp, Amen. That preacher use God that's right. to lie to you. That's right. Woman that's married to a preacher mm -hmm. who got a living wife. Mm -hmm. Woman, you ain't married. Mm -hmm. You're riding on another woman's dog. That's right. You're not married. That's right. You're not married. That's right. I don't care if that preacher told you and he was jumping around. Let him tell you what he wants. That's right. When he's done, mm. ask him, is your wife living? Is your wife living? Mm. Well, yeah, my wife is living. Mm. Start walking. That's right. That's right. You women who've been suckered into having babies by some pimp preacher that you married, mm. and his wife is still living. That's right. Got a false prophet. He's not a pastor. He's not a preacher. Call me. Amen. Amen. I know you. They don't like this message. They don't like it, and I don't care if you don't. Shut down your church. Close your pulpit. Usher them out. May God keep you. May God preserve you. Come on again next week at 12 noon. Peace be unto you.